What is up, everybody? The day has finally come. On One 2021 is finally out. I am so, so excited. I've spent the last few weeks testing out this program, and I'm super excited that it is finally released. It's got a ton of great features, a few new ones that are really great, and overall, I just really love the program. I honestly think that if you want to create really nice photos um, in a short amount of time, this is the way to go. And I'm not being paid by On1 to make this video, but I did include a link below in the description that you can go ahead and purchase this program from. Um, like I said, I don't get paid from On1 to make this video, but if you do purchase their program through my link, I will get a small commission on that. Um, however, that being said, all of my opinions are truly what I think. I'm not just blowing smoke here. Um, I truly think this is a great program and it's something that you need to grab, especially um, being as price effective as it is. You can also use this program as a plugin for Photoshop. Um, so if you don't wanna give up editing in Photoshop and you just wanna use it as a plugin, um, I love doing that as well. So really this program I think is for everybody. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into the walkthrough of the program. So upon loading my photo, the interface is pretty much the same as On1 2020. Now, I really like that interface, so I'm glad they didn't do too much to change it. Um, but for those of you that have not used On1 2020, um, this is what the interface looks like. It's very simple to navigate here. Um, generally speaking, I like to change nav to um, levels, and that gives me a histogram up here once it loads. And then I can always be watching that histogram. And then I scroll down to just get all of my basic adjustments that you'd expect in any raw image editor. Now I've already gone through and adjusted these basic adjustments. I'm not gonna waste your time talking about how to adjust a contrast slider or a highlight slider because I really just wanna focus on the features of the program and the reasons why I think it's a great program for you to pick up. So you can see, like I said, all the basic adjustments here. We've got a little a way to do sharpening, um, noise reduction. You can do your lens corrections here. Um, and then you could do a little bit of transforming if you wanted to do some kind of warping or something. Um, yeah, those are all great. That is exactly what they had in On1 2020. Uh, what I really like about the On1 software though is always their effects. So I can go to the effects tab here and go ahead and put some effects on my photo. Now in this photo in particular, I might wanna do a little bit of color adjustment to bring out the oranges and yellows. And so I'm gonna do that using the color adjustment um, effect here. I can go ahead and use one of the presets. For example, I'll try out their fall. And you can see that when I toggle that, that pops my fall color. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that. You can see that it adjusts our yellows and oranges and reds. Uh, I'm fine with that. I like the idea of having these presets because they're super easy to use. It's just one click and I can move on. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that. The next one that I wanna use, uh, I really enjoy the sunshine filter. It gives your photo kind of a glowing um, look a little bit. You can see if I toggle this, everything seems to kind of glow off the page. I can even add more glow, which looks really nice with these clouds here. Um, I'm gonna reduce the amount though, just to make it a little less bright, just like that. And you can see that just in about one minute, I've already made two effects that have really made quite a difference in my photo. Um, maybe I want to drop the greens, so I might go back and open this color adjustment layer and go to green, and let's reduce the saturation of greens just a little bit, and the aqua as well. I think the trees might be picking up a little bit of aqua, maybe blue a little bit as well. So the nice thing is you can always go back into the older effects that you've already put down. Uh, none of these are destructive, so you can always go back. I could even go back and adjust things in my develop module here. I could add a little more contrast or do whatever I want. Go back to my effects panel and then adjust these again. So the last thing I wanna do here is go ahead and use a glow layer. And I'm just gonna create a little more glow it's nice because you have a lot of different options on Glow. By default, it comes out as soft light. I like using the presets and working from there. On this photo, I want my Glow to be a little lighter because it is kind of foggy. So I'm gonna click lighter, and then I can actually reduce the amount. You can see it switches over to screen and toggle that. You can see that helps add a little more haze to the scene. Now, if I look at that and I say it's a little too hazy, but I like the Glow, I'm just gonna bounce back to develop, and I am going to decrease the haze. That's looking pretty good. So now some of the newest features in On1 include the ability to have kind of custom brushes that will allow you to add clouds or fog. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys that right now on this photo as well as one more. So this is one of my favorite new features. You can see I've already got the brush selected here. This is my brush. Um, you can see all the brushes up here. So these are the options they have for nature. You can do like a little lightning strike um, or any of these clouds, birds, whatever you want. Um, 
and you're actually able to feather it, uh, which is good because it's not super obvious that you've done it then, as well as change the opacity, the flow, and the angle. So if I was decided I didn't want this angle on this cloud, I could go ahead and click up here and change the angle. So the really nice way to paint in clouds is to go down here and go to paint with color and click this eyedropper and select a color of a cloud that you would like to match. Probably over here looks good to me. So I'm just gonna click there and now I'm painting with color. So now I can just click and you can see that we are now, it's a little more realistic to paint in the clouds this way because we're actually, we don't just have a big round brush. So it is gonna be a little more textured even though you can't tell when you click very well, but it is more textured. It is gonna look more realistic. The nice thing is this is all on an adjustment layer so we can toggle this and I could make some more clicks up here. Of course, we could lower the opacity, work it in slower. Uh, that might be good as well. But I'm really liking just creating kind of this little vignette with the clouds, just to kind of make it look like we're looking at this waterfall through kind of a hole in the clouds almost. And I'm just gonna go like that. Now, if I felt like the effect was a little strong, the really nice thing is that I can go ahead and click on this layer here and I can drop the opacity. That's gonna decrease the effect. So that is looking pretty good. Now, this is a really easy way to create great photos very quickly. Uh, the other nice thing that I really like about this On1 2021 is the ability to make really fine selections. So let's say I just wanted to select this waterfall. I'm gonna make this brush size smaller so that my cursor is not quite so big. So we wanna change this waterfall here. Um, and let's actually just go back to a round brush. Now, if I wanted to just target the waterfall uh, and not everything else, I can click here and then I can click Lumen. If you're familiar with luminosity masks, this is what we're gonna be doing here. Basically, anything that's white is selected, anything that's black is not. I just wanna select this waterfall here. So I can go ahead and slide these levels. And remember, I want the waterfall to be white and most everything around it to be dark. Right about there looks good. And now I can actually go in, I can change my brush to paint out and increase the size of my brush. And I'm just going to paint around and make sure that just the waterfall is selected. And what I'm trying to do here is just reduce the brightness of the waterfall. And I might want to feather that at 100. Okay, and you could definitely spend more time doing this, um, but that is good for me for now. I can go ahead and click back down here, and you can see that it by default goes to negative one exposure. I'm gonna zero that out. I'm just gonna reduce the highlights just to bring that waterfall back a little bit more. You can see that I can toggle that really easily there and that looks good. So the best thing that I like about this software is the ability that you have all of these layers. Um, oftentimes I'll do a photo with 15 or 20 adjustment layers here. I've got maybe 10 effects and then I have everything in the develop tab. And the nice thing is I can go back and affect anything at any point in my image. So if I wanted to change something somewhere else, um, I would be able to do that and still come back and non-destructively edit my photo. In fact, I could be happy with this edit today and two weeks later I could come back and decide that, you know what, I want to get rid of that sunshine filter and just get rid of it, uh, easy as that. So this is honestly, I think the best bet if you wanna create great photos very quickly, super easy software to learn. I wanna show you guys one more thing with the cloud brush and we're gonna go ahead and pop open a new photo right now. Okay, and one more thing that I wanna show you here is on this photo, I'm gonna show you guys, uh, you can see it's got a pretty blue sky, it's pretty boring. I'm gonna show you how to add a little more clouds. So we're gonna do exactly what we did before, check paint with color, then we're gonna click the box here and we're gonna sample a cloud that represents the color we'd like our clouds to be. So I see this little one up here, I'm gonna go ahead and click that and now I'm gonna be painting with color. That's gonna take just a second to load here. Um, and I am going to be able to select a cloud shape. I've already selected this one. You could really do any of these um, or a mixture, um, but these are the three kind of cloud shapes that they've given us here. Make sure you're on paint in. Um, you can do a really high feather, but I find that when you're trying to paint in clouds, you probably want a feather of 20 or so. And maybe I'll increase the size just a touch. And we'll go ahead and click there. And then I usually recommend changing the angle 
uh, every time that you click just so that you get different looking clouds. Uh, we can also go ahead and change our type of cloud here. Let's click over here, click over here. Let's change the angle. All right, and that is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and toggle this. So you can see that it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, it could, but you don't want to do it too much to where it, it looks unrealistic. But it just does enough to add a little more visual interest to the scene. Um, at this point, we have these three cloud shapes, and I'm super hopeful that they will be adding more cloud shapes soon so that we will have tons of different options to choose from. So whether you're adding fog, uh, whether you're adding real clouds, whatever you're adding, uh, I do think this is a really great option to use. So that kind of wraps up uh, how to use this new tool in ON1 2021. There's a few other new tools, but that was the most significant to me um, and just kind of a general walkthrough of the whole program. So I really hope this made sense to you guys and um, that you like the program and are thinking about picking it up. Alrighty guys, that is all I got for you this week. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and consider picking up the program. As I mentioned earlier, I do have a link down below that you can go ahead and pick that up at. It'll give me a small commission fee um, and I just really appreciate if you use my link. Um, and like I said, and I love the program. I love the way it allows you to quickly make edits that are non-destructive. Uh, it's great for brand new photographers, great for experienced photographers. I just really think this is a great program that is very, very user friendly, easy to use. If you're struggling with Photoshop or Lightroom because you don't understand all the different things going on, this is the program for you. It is so easy to use, so powerful. Um, and I really just don't have anything bad to say. I, I've loved using the program. I've loved getting the chance to test it out. So if you guys have any questions about the program, or if you want to see more content on on one i'd love to bring it to you go ahead and let me know in the comments um, otherwise we will see you guys next time be sure to like and subscribe thank you so much